Amen. If you'll take your Bibles with me tonight and go to the book of Ecclesiastes. The book of Ecclesiastes. <clears throat> Haven't our young people done a good job tonight? Amen. And I'm so, uh, I'm so thankful for them. And uh, we talked about it before uh, the service tonight. And uh, I reminded them the whole reason why we... Uh, why we do things at church is not to, to be glorified by man, although I think it's uh, appropriate for us to, to clap for them and tell them they did a good job and encourage them in that regard, but that's uh, ultimately not why they're doing it. And uh, they're doing it to, to please God and to, uh, to, to make sure that He is, is glorified in what they're doing. And I'm so thankful uh, for every one of them. And uh, it's, uh, it's encouraging to, to see them at least trying to use the gifts that God has, has blessed them with. And uh, it wasn't that long ago, at least that's what I like to tell myself, <laughs> uh, that I was in their shoes. And although it, every, every uh, year that passes, it gets a little further away. But I, I still like to say it wasn't that long ago. And uh, so can I say that? Is that all right to say and uh, it wasn't that long ago that I was, was in their shoes. And uh, I remember uh, <clears throat> the first uh, sermon that I got up to preach. And uh, it was probably about three minutes. And uh, well, that's all right. And, uh, and it was a, a blessing. And uh, I've, we're working with some of the young men. And hopefully uh, in the next couple of years we'll have some of these young men up here and uh, sharing the word with us. And that would be, certainly be a blessing. And uh, it, regardless of, of whether you go into full-time ministry or not, it's always good to uh, be able to, to share what God shares with you uh, with other people. And uh, one thing that, that I, I can remember uh, thinking as a young person, and you probably uh, were this way too, and young people, I, I'm sure you probably uh, have this thought uh, that I can't wait till I get to be such and such an age right? And uh, adults, we can all remember back to when we th had those thoughts. I, I can't wait till I can drive, right? Because when I can drive, man, that's going to be great. And uh, now sometimes uh, some of us wish that we didn't have to drive, right? And, uh, but we, we, we can't wait till we get to that point. Or uh, I can't wait till I get to high school, and I can't wait till I get to college because in college, man, I'll have so much more freedom. Freedom, And that just, let me just tell you, young people, that's baloney, right? You do have freedom, all right? But you have more responsibility. With more freedom comes more responsibility. Uh, but I, I, I can remember uh, thinking those things and even uh, sometimes uh, I still have those thoughts. I can't wait till such and such happens. Uh, and there's nothing wrong uh, with looking forward to the future and looking forward to the, the next steps in life, young people. There's nothing uh, wrong with looking uh, forward to college. There's nothing wrong with looking forward to high school and the next steps in your life. But when I came to this passage here in Ecclesiastes, I caught one word. And it's the word now. And uh, I, th I think... It's appropriate for our young people, and I want our young people to think about this tonight, that now, right now, I can serve God where I'm at, in the age that I'm at, right now, and I don't have to wait until later to serve God. I can serve Him right now. Uh, I want us to read Ecclesiastes chapter number 12 is where I, I asked you to open to, but I want to back up to verse number 9 uh, of chapter 11. And I want to point out some things to you here. Uh, <clears throat> the heading in my Bible here in Ecclesiastes 12 uh, or Ecclesiastes 11 in verse number nine, the title is this advice to young people. And uh, you, you think about who is the human penman here, and that's a, a fellow by the name of Solomon. And uh, as you read here, I want you to kind of to think about this. Solomon, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, uh, wrote these things, and maybe he was thinking back on his life. And uh, maybe he was thinking back about some failures, some past failures in his life. And he said, I have some advice that I want to give to some young people. Look at verse number 9, chapter 11, Ecclesiastes. It says, Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, 
and let thine heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth and walk in the ways of thine heart and in the sight of thine eyes. But know that for all these things, God will bring thee into judgment. He's saying there's consequences for actions. Verse 10, therefore remove sorrow from thy heart, put away evil from thy flesh, for childhood and youth are vanity. I don't think he means that it's meaningless. I think he means it's fleeting away. Youth is fleeting away. Look at verse number 1 of chapter 12. Remember, and here's the word that caught my attention, remember now. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. And he continues on in this chapter and he gives uh, kind of some metaphors. I want to, let's kind of read through some of these. Verse 2, he says, while the sun or the light, or the moon, or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. I think uh, there, the clouds and the, the stars being darkened, he says, while you still have your sight. Uh, when you're, because uh, there's one thing, uh, uh, as we know, right, as you age, one thing that begins to diminish a little bit sometimes is sight. Verse 3 says, in the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders cease. The grinders, I think, has to do with the teeth, because they're few. And, uh, they, and those that look out of the windows be darkened. Continues on, and then uh, just skip down for sake of time to verse number 8. He said, Vanities of vanities, saith the preacher. All is vanity. All is vanity. Uh, tonight I want to speak to you just on, for a few moments. I have six points tonight. And uh, young people, I want you to listen. Because uh, I want you to, to encourage you to, to think about the fact that now is the time. Uh, it doesn't matter really though if you're a young person in here tonight or if you're an older person in here tonight. Now is the time for each of these things that we'll talk about. Let's go to Lord in prayer and then we'll jump right into these things. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we're so thankful, uh, Lord, for your word. Lord, I thank you for these young people and what a wonderful job that they did, the time that they spent to prepare and the time that uh, they worked on the songs and on the verses and thank you for that. Lord, I pray though uh, that that wouldn't just be something that's fleeting, Lord, but it'd be something that would be lasting, that they would desire to continue to serve you and Lord, continue to serve you uh, through the church. Lord, I pray that these young people uh, Lord, would uh, use their life to bring honor and glorify, glorify you. Lord, I pray that you would bless these, these few moments now. Lord, these thoughts that I have, I pray that you would, would use them in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Number one, I want you to notice this, uh, that now's the time of salvation. Now's the time of salvation. 2 Corinthians 6, 2 says this, uh, For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. It uses that word that, uh, that Solomon used, the word now. Now is the time of salvation. Don't put it off, uh, is what the Apostle Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, was saying. Now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Uh, if you haven't been saved, now is the time to get saved. Young person, older person alike, it doesn't matter. Now is the time if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ uh, as your personal Savior. The Bible tells us that it is appointed unto men once to die, and after this, the judgment. Everyone will be judged one day. Because of our sin, we've all been separated from God for all of eternity. Romans 6.23 tells us this, and it was uh, quoted just a few moments ago by Addison. Uh, it said, for the wages of sin is death. That death being eternal separation from God for all of eternity in a place called hell. Uh, that's what the Bible says. Uh, the wages of sin is death, eternal separation, but the gift of God is eternal life 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. God loved us and he sent Jesus to make a way for us to go to heaven. It's through Jesus and through trusting him as our Savior. If you've never trusted him as your Savior, your personal Savior, trust him and him alone today for salvation because now is the time of salvation. Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But obviously, I understand we are uh, here. At, uh, we're here at a Sunday night, and I would hope that most of us in here know Jesus Christ as our Savior. We've had that uh, place where we've come, as Pastor preached this morning, that time where we've come to our Bethel, and we've received Jesus as our Savior. Uh, but let me just encourage you with this, and we'll talk about this in a moment. Uh, now's the time of salvation for someone else. For someone else that we come in contact with. Now is the time of salvation. So, uh, number one, now is the time of salvation. Number two, think about this. Now's the time to give God his rightful place. Now's the time to give God his rightful place. And young person, uh, you don't have to wait till later on in life. Till you get to the, to the next stage in your life, till I, till I get to high school or till I get to be a young adult, I'm going to wait till then to give God his rightful place because I want to do what I want to do. Uh, maybe it's a young adult that says, hey, uh, I want to I do what I want to do and later on in life, uh, I'll give God his place. But I, I want to be what I want to be right now. Uh, and that's not how it should be. We should give God his rightful place now. Ecclesiastes 12, 1 there, our text that we read just a moment ago, says, remember now thy creator. You know, I think Solomon uh, rightly recognized his creator. Uh, he recognized God as the creator. This is the one that made you. And in Jeremiah, we're told that before I formed you in the belly, I knew thee. God knows each one of us. He made each one of us. If we've been saved, uh, we've been adopted. We're a child of God. We're bought with a price. We'll get to that in just a moment. But think about this very fact of creator. He's the creator. Therefore, he should have uh, a rightful place. Again, thinking about the fact that we've been bought with a price. Uh, what does the Bible tell us? 1 Corinthians 6.20, For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You see, uh, if you're a child of God, you're not your own anymore. You've been bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, now's the time to give God his rightful place. And what's that rightful place, you ask? Go with me to the book of Colossians. Colossians chapter number one, because I think it answers this question uh, very easily that we're talking about what place should God have? Where is his rightful place? Solomon called him the creator, uh, and he should have a certain spot in our life. Colossians 1 and verse 18 says, And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in some things he might have the preeminence. Is that what your Bible says? That in all things. That in all things he might have the preeminence. What's that word preeminence mean? Well, uh, I think one of the ways that we could put it is, is this. That it's the first place. Uh, it's the very first place of any, above anything else in my life uh, is Jesus Christ. And that's his rightful place is number one in my life. Do you know what? Uh, I love my wife a lot. But you know what? Who should be above my wife in my life? The Lord Jesus Christ. He should have the preeminence in my life. Which, let me just tell you this, if he has the rightful place, that number one place in, in your life like he ought to, then your relationship with your wife will be correct. Uh, then every other relationship will be correct if Christ has that first place in your life. What are you putting ahead of Jesus? Uh, what's more important to you than Jesus? Hey, let's do a checkup tonight because now's the time, young person. Now's the time, uh, individual here tonight, friend. Uh, now's the time for God to have his rightful place. And that's first place in our life. Uh, what do we put? Uh, we can think about different things that we love. 
We can think about different things that are, are very dear to us. What is something that we put in front of Jesus? There should be, shouldn't be anything on that list. He should be the first thing. Solomon, again, recognized him as the creator. And I think that had some to do uh, with just the very fact of where, how he was yielding uh, and that, that he owed a great debt to this creator. Notice the third thing here. Not only do we see now's the time of salvation, now's the time uh, to give God his rightful place, that's first place, but now's the time to obey God's word. Now's the time to obey God's word. Deuteronomy chapter number six, uh, we find uh, the children of Israel, instructions that were given to the children of Israel. If you go back with me to Deuteronomy chapter number six, we'll uh, read these verses very quickly. Deuteronomy chapter number 6, but now's the time to obey God's word. Now's the time to, to listen to his word and to be obedient to it. Deuteronomy 6 and verse number 1, now these are the commandments, the statutes, the judgments, which the Lord your God commanded to teach you that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it. Uh, this was instructions, again, that was given to the children of Israel. These are the commandments. These are the statutes uh, that, that God gave to them uh, so that when they go to the land, they'll obey them whether, whether they go to possess it. Verse number two, that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments. Again, it was emphasized, keep his statutes, keep his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, and, and that thy days may be prolonged. Hear, therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto the child, thy children and shalt talk of them uh, when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up. Doesn't it sound like this is something that uh, for them was pretty important? Uh, they were to obey these statutes. They were to teach them to their children. Verse number eight, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand. Uh, and they shall be uh, frontlets between thine eyes, meaning, hey, it's supposed to be always before you. Verse number nine, thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and upon the gates, uh, and it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he sware unto thy father, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, uh, to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not, and houses full of all good things which thou Fillest not, and wells dig which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full. Then beware, lest thou, notice this, beware, lest thou forget the Lord which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt and from the house of bondage. Uh, it was given, these, these laws, these statutes, these commandments were given uh, for a purpose. God's word, listen, uh, has, was given to us for a purpose, for us to obey it, for us to follow it. This is our guide for our life. Uh, this is where we find how we should live. And uh, it's time to obey the Lord. Now, I love the fact that in this passage that we just read here, uh, it, it talks about them being obedient, if they will obey the, the commandments and the statutes of God. Uh, it talked about there were some benefits in that. That their days would be prolonged, uh, that they might increase mightily. They would possess that land that flowed with milk and honey. Uh, and those are all blessings of God. Hey, let me just encourage you with this fact, that when we obey the Word of God, uh, when we yield to the Word of God and we obey His Word, there's blessing. God blesses when we obey his word. But let me ask you this. Did the children of Israel always obey God's word? No. Uh, in, fact, they, uh, they, in fact, they failed. 
But aren't you thankful uh, that God is a God of second chances? Uh, The children of Israel, because they didn't believe God and uh, obey his word, they had to wander in the wilderness for 40 years before they could possess that land that God had promised. Uh, And Moses, I I love the the very fact that Moses, uh, you still see the grace of God on Moses' life. Uh, Because even though uh, he didn't get to go into the land, God still let him have at least a glimpse of what it looked like. Uh, And God is a gracious God. Uh, Jonah's another example that we could give, but for sake of time, we won't even, we don't even look at him. Uh, But he, the word of the Lord came to him. He didn't obey God's word, but then God God gave him a second chance. And God, uh, his word came to him again. But now is the time. Hey, uh, don't delay. Obey God's word now. Now's the time to obey God's word. Number four, I want you to think about this, that now is the time to do things God's way. Now's the the time to do things God's way. Haggai uh, 1.5 says, Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. What is God's way? What is God's way? Well, I believe uh, that it's the opposite of what our flesh wants to do. Uh, It's the very opposite of what our flesh wants to do, but being led by the Holy Spirit. Notice with me, if you would, uh, Galatians chapter number 5, verse 13 uh, through uh, 18. It says this, it says, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, but if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill uh, the lust of the flesh. For the lust for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary one to the other. So you cannot do the things that ye would, but if ye be led of the spirit, you're not under the law. Uh, I think it's, it's this, how are we going to do things God's way? Well, you yield to the Holy Spirit. You listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit and let him uh, lead you. You let him uh, guide you. You let him direct you. So now's the time to do things God's way. Number five is this. Now's the time to work for God. Now's the time to work for God. James 4.14 says this, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It's even a vapor that appeareth for a little while and vanisheth away. Uh, Ecclesiastes, we talked about this just a moment ago in our text. Uh, Solomon, I think, was looking back over his life and realizing that his days were limited. And so he was giving uh, these instructions and giving these, this advice to young people, uh, telling them because, hey, listen, uh, youth is vanity. It's fleeting. It's going away quickly. We don't know how long that we have. And because we don't know how long we have, Everyone in here, we need to be working for Jesus Christ, uh, telling others about how that they can know that Jesus died for them and that he loves them and he paid for them to go to heaven. Uh, John 9, 4 says this, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Jesus said, I I have to do this. I must work the works of him that sent me while it's day. The night cometh. Hey, listen, no, none of us in here uh, knows we're not promised tomorrow. We must work the works of him that sent us. We must work the works of our Savior, what he's called us to do. What, has, what was the works of Jesus? What was he put here for? Well, in Matthew 18, 11, he said, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus, his whole uh, point and his whole mission uh, was so that people would be saved. Hey, listen, that's, that should be our goal in life. Now's the time to work for God. Now's the time to tell that neighbor about Jesus Christ. Now's the time to tell that friend at school uh, how they can be saved. Now's the time for that. I, I, I thought about this, this poem, and I didn't realize it was so long. Uh, and it's uh, a poem that I had heard much as a young person. 
Uh, it's by C.T. Studd. And uh, only one life will soon be passed. And we, we, you probably uh, know at least the, the, the chorus of it. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Uh, but I want you to listen to the rest of it. It says, two li- little lines I heard one day traveling, a- traveling along life's busy way, bringing conviction to my heart and from my mind would not depart. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Only one life, yes, only one. Soon will its fleeting hours be done. Then in that day, my Lord to meet, and stand before his judgment seat. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Only one life, the still small voice, gently pleads for a better choice, bidding me selfish aims to leave and to God's holy will to cleave. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Only one life, a few brief years, each with its burdens, hopes, and fears, each with its clays I must fulfill, living for self or in his will. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. When this bright world would tempt me sore, when Satan would a victory score, and self would seek to have its way, then help me, Lord, with joy to say, only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Give me, Father, a purpose deep in joy or sorrow, thy word to keep. Faithful and true, whate'er the strife, pleasing thee in my daily life. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Oh, let my love with fervor burn, and from the world now let me turn. Living for thee and thee alone, bringing thy, thee pleasure On thy throne, only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Only one life, yes, only one. Now let me say, thy will be done. And when at last I'll I'll hear the call, I know I'll say, t'was worth it all. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. And when I die, when I'm dying, how happy I'll be if the lamp of my life has been burning, burned out for thee. I love how that ends. If the lamp of my life had burned out for thee. Because that's exactly what we're supposed to be doing right now. We're supposed to be working for God right now, letting our light so shine so that men would see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. Now's the time to work for God. One last thing and we'll be finished tonight. Now's the time to stand for God. Now's the time to stand for God. Ephesians 6, 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You know, we live in a wicked day. Uh, And now's the time for us as Christians to stand, to stand up for what's right. I think about Esther. And what a great example uh, that we have of someone that stood for such a time as this. It says, Esther 4.14, For if all, thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Esther's time was there. It was then for her to take a stand. Uh, I believe that today is a day for you and I to stand. God's looking for some young, young people today uh, that says, you know what? I'm going to take a stand now for God. In my school, I'm going to stand up uh, for what's right. I'm going to stand for God. God's looking for some uh, older people that will say, hey, I'll take a stand. I'll stand against our culture. I'll stand up against the devil. Uh, and I'll stand up for Jesus. Now's the time. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. Now's the time of salvation. Let me ask you tonight, are you, are you saved? Do you know Jesus Christ as your savior? Now's the time to, to give God his rightful place. Will you give God his rightful place if he doesn't have it tonight in your life? Will you let him have uh, the preeminence in your life if you haven't already? Now's the time to obey God's word. 
Will you live by God's word and obey it? Now's the time to do things God's way. Will you yield to the Holy Spirit? Now's the time to work for God. Will you work for him? Tell others about him. Now's the time to stand for God. Will you stand up for Jesus? Now's the time. Don't put it off. You won't regret it. Young person, hey, now's the time to live for Christ and do his will. Older person that's been saved for years, hey, now's the time to continue serving Jesus Christ and continue uh, living for him. Let's stand together. We'll have a hymn of invitation. I want to encourage you, <clears throat> if you would, you can come to this altar tonight. Uh, maybe the Lord's dealt with your heart. Maybe there's something that uh, you need to be doing now that you're not. Maybe Christ doesn't have the preeminence like he ought to in your life. Maybe you want to just come and pray for these young people. Pray for them as uh, they, they are living in a, a wicked day that they'll take a stand now for Jesus Christ. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you for your word tonight. Thank you uh, for how that you spoke to my heart. Lord, to remember now, my creator. Lord, to give you the rightful place now. Lord, to work for you now. Lord, to uh, serve you now. Lord, I pray that you would help us with these things tonight. Lord, I pray that we would desire, uh, Lord, to see these young people continue to serve you with their life not just in a service like this but lord even on the outside of the the walls of this church lord i pray that they would stand for you lord i pray that you would have your will and way in our invitation time tonight in christ's name i pray amen as your heads bowed eyes are closed the piano play the lord spoke into your heart if you'd like to come pray for our young people tonight the altar's open come right along as she plays